Today we're gonna to explore a pretty interesting infinite double sum, or maybe doubly infinite sum. I don't know exactly how you would say it. So we've got the sum as m goes from one to infinity of the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over m squared plus n squared. And our goal is to determine whether or not this sum converges. So does it converge or does it diverge? And clearly, since we're adding only positive terms here, if it diverges, it diverges infinitely. Now, there are a couple of related facts that I'd like to talk about real quickly before we look at this question. And the first is the sum of the just reciprocal of squares, so the single sum. And that, in fact, does converge. That's the famous Basel problem. And that sums up to pi squared over 6. I've got some videos on the channel where we derive this result. Another sort of more general result about the convergence of these types of series is the so-called p-test, which says that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p converges if and only if p is bigger than 1. So I think looking at this, that provides some motivation that this sort of thing should converge because we've got squares in the denominator. But then again, we've got a double sum. So maybe the fact that we've got a double sum counteracts those squares or something. Anyway, so let's explore it a little bit to find the answer to this question. So we're going to first start by writing this double sum as the limit of partial sums. So we'll take the limit of, as capital M and capital N go to infinity, of the sum as M goes from one to capital M, and then the sum as N goes from one to capital N of our thing here. So we've got M squared plus N squared. And now what we're gonna do is compare this to the integral of a function. So let's motivate that right here. So let's consider the following function. We have f of xy equals one over x squared plus y squared. And let's also look at what's happening like in the xy plane where we would like integrate this function. So let's maybe get one, two, three, four, five. So the natural numbers along the X and the Y axis, five. And then when we do this double sum, what we're doing is adding up values of this function at all of these so-called lattice points. And so those lattice points are gonna be points in this Cartesian coordinate plane where both entries are natural numbers. Okay, so there we've got it. So taking this double sum is like adding up all the values of this function at these lattice points like I said. But now we could rephrase this thing right here as the limit as m and n goes to infinity of the sum as m goes from one to capital M, and then the sum as n goes from one to capital N of f evaluated at something that I'll call x sub m, y sub n where we've broken this up into some sort of like Riemann sum. And then maybe we could put like delta x, y there as well, just to fit it in, just keeping in mind that however we define delta x, y, that should be equal to one, given the fact that this f of x sub n, y sub n should turn into this thing right here. So just to fill all of this in, we have x sub m is equal to the number m, and then y sub n is equal to the number n, and that makes delta x equal to, well, generally it's x sub m plus one minus x sub n, so that'll just be one, and delta y will be one for the same sort of reason. So like I said, we're taking this and envisioning it as a double Riemann sum. Now we're going to use the fact that this is a decreasing function. You might say, well, what does it really mean to be a decreasing function if your domain is like two-dimensional? And I will admit that that's a little bit sketchy. We have to talk about decreasing along which direction. Well, notice as we go in this direction, this direction, that direction, anywhere radially from the origin, the value of this function decreases. So since the value of this function decreases as we radially go from the origin, 
we can replace this sum with an integral and pick up an inequality. And the inequality will favor the sum. In other words, we'll have that all of this is bigger than or equal to the limit as capital M goes to infinity and capital N goes to infinity of the integral from one to M, one to N of one over X squared plus Y squared DX DY. And again, we know that that's an inequality because instead of taking all of the values of the function, for instance, between this lattice point and this lattice point, we're just taking this lattice point and favoring it for all of these values, this lattice point and favoring it for all of those values, and so on and so forth, and that creates something larger. Okay, but let's notice that this is equal to a double integral from one to infinity. So in other words, maybe a double integral over one to infinity squared. So that half open interval. And then we'll write dx dy as dA, and then we have this is over x squared plus y squared. Then since we're integrating over something that involves x squared plus y squared, that really motivates us to change to polar coordinates. But this is a bit tricky to change to polar coordinates because we're not integrating over the entire first quadrant. We're integrating over the portion of the first quadrant that's bound by these two rays. So this ray where x is equal to one and this ray is y, where y is equal to one. So that would be this stuff right here. So as we change to polar coordinates, we have to be pretty careful. And in fact, what we'll do is instead of changing to polar coordinates and calculating the entire integral, we'll pick up another inequality and only calculate part of the integral. So we'll draw a circle of radius, I think it's like two times the square root of two based at the origin. So we're picking it to be two times the square root of two, so we're sure that it goes through this point right here, which is two comma two. And then when we set up our polar integral, we'll only integrate outside of this circle. But then we have to think carefully about the angle. So at first you might think we integrate from zero to pi over two, but notice integrating from zero to pi over two will pick up values of the function that are within this region right here, but that's outside of our goal region of integration. So to fix this, we'll define two angles. And we're gonna define these angles, but not really calculate them. It's like sort of clear how they're defined by this geometric rule here. So we'll take a ray from the origin, and it'll go through the intersection of the circle that we've drawn, and this line, which is y equals one, and then another ray going through the origin, and this circle, which is x equals one, or sorry, this vertical line, which is x equals one. So there gives us that ray right there, and there we get that ray right there. And now if we only integrate between these two angles, which we'll call maybe alpha and then beta, then that ensures that we only stay within this region that includes our lattice points. But of course we're cutting this region down into pieces, so we have to include another inequality. Okay, so now let's write this down. So our integral right here is bigger than or equal to the integral from alpha to beta and then the integral from two up to infinity of dA, which let's recall that's r dr d theta over x squared plus y squared, but by our polar change of variables, x squared plus y squared is r squared, so we get r squared here. Okay, but now let's notice that that will be equal to beta minus alpha, just doing the theta integral. And then we'll have the integral from two up to infinity of dr over r. But then by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, this gives us beta minus alpha, and then the limit as r goes to infinity of the natural log of r minus the natural log of two, taking the antiderivative of one over r. But as r goes to infinity, the natural log of r also goes to infinity, so that means this whole thing trends off to infinity. So let's maybe look at a little summary of what we have. 
we have our goal sum starting here that we want to determine if it converges or diverges. We have a string of equalities as well as inequalities. And then we've got all of our inequalities are pointing towards this being largest. That means this must indeed diverge. Okay, so if you like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel. And also I've got some other videos where I do double sums on the channel and there should be one on the screen right now if you want to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.